Hello. So let's look at um one of the online graphing tools um, that can help you plot functions or visualize functions. So this is important because it, it helps you understand how different functions behave and when there is transformation operation on that function, you immediately know how the function will respond to such transformation. So let's look at some examples. Let's say you want to plot the graph of y equals x. No, we expect that to be a straight line, right? So that's pretty easy. So why is that the case? Because you know, when x when x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is two. When x is three, y is three. When x is four, y is four. So that makes sense. So y, the value of y is the same as the value of x. Then what happens when I put minus x? Then it flip, get flips. Because you can see that this equation is now an equation, the equation of a line that has a negative gradient. So if you remember your uh, equation of a line y equals mx plus c, in this case, the gradient is negative. So which means when, um, when x is minus one, for example, y will be one. So it means the value of x is basically the negative, and the value of y is basically the negative of the value of x. Okay? So when, when x is 2 here, y is minus 2. So when x is 4 here, y is minus 4. So that's what that point is saying. So we can see is a straight line with a negative gradient. It slopes from left to right downwards. Now let's, what happens, let's look a little bit more about linear um, functions. So x, y equals x. What happens if I do y equals x plus three? Then that is a transformation. You know, that line shifts to the, to the left by three units. So you can see that from zero, from the origin, it now moves to minus three. So when you add something to, um, to, to x, then it moves along the horizontal, and you know, the point will move along the horizontal axis, along the um, horizontal axis, but when you add something to y, it moves along the vertical axis, okay? So you understand a little bit more when we look at more complicated function. So, it means that when x is 0, y is 3. So when x is 0, y is 3. You can see 0, 0,3. When x is 1, y is 4. So when x is uh, 1 here, so x is 1 here, y is 4 there. Okay? So when you subtract 3, it moves to the right. So you can see that uh, when x is 0, y will be minus 4, minus 3. So when x is zero, y is minus three. When x is one, y will be minus two, like, like that. So what if you have a quadratic? So let's say you have y equals x to the power of two. So we all know that it's, it's going to be a U-shaped quadratic function that sits on the origin. Now, if I do, if I, if I perform some, some transformation on this function, then how does it respond to it? If I say plus four, you can see that it now moves to, now the origin, it moves, the minimum now moves from zero to four. Now, what does this tell you? In terms of, we remember root of equation, or root of a quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation that does not have a real root, you know, will not touch the x-axis. You can see that this function is, is not touching the x-axis at all. It tells you that it doesn't have a, a, root, a real root. Now, how do you know? If, if I try to solve this pro problem, y equals x squared plus 4, you know, if I want to find the root of the equation, I set that to 0, then I'll have x squared equals minus 4. So x will be plus or minus square root of minus 4. So, you know, you can, if, you, if you press on your calculator, um, the square root of minus 4, it gives a math error. It tells you that you cannot find 
a real value for that. So it's basically a complex number. So that's why it's not, it's not touching the, this axis. It's not touching the, the X axis. You know, if you remember the, the use of your discriminant, you know, you can also check whether if a, a quadratic function we have a real root by, by calculating the, the discriminant and see whether the discriminant is positive or negative. Now, um, what happens if I put minus four? You know, minus four, you can see that this now has a real root. Yeah, you can see it's crossing the x axis at minus two and two. And that is expected because y equals x squared minus four. If I, if I factorize the right hand side, I'll have x minus, minus two and x plus two. So if I set that to zero in order to solve it for the for the roots, then I'll have x minus two equals zero or x plus two equals zero. So then you have x equals two or x equals minus two. So that will be the solution. And you can see clearly that that is where you have the, the roots. Okay, so you can see how the, the function responds to, to, to certain transformations. Now, what happens if you do x squared? Now, instead of adding to y, I had to x. So instead of, then I have something that looks like x. Um, okay, I have something like that, x plus four or squared. So you can see what, I, what has happened. Now the function has moved along the horizontal in this case. So it moves horizontally. So it moves from zero to a new position here on the X axis. So this is, you know, we've added something to X. So we've added four to X. That's why it moves along the X axis. Previously, we added something to Y. You know, I didn't touch that. So if, when this is evaluated at the value of x, then four will be added to the result. So the four that is added to the result is what will push it upwards. If it is subtracted, it's going to push it downwards. Okay, So that's how it responds to that, that, that translation. Okay? When you add something to, to x, then it moves along the x axis. When you add something to y, it moves along the y axis, which is vertically. Okay. So I hope that helps you understand transformation. So now I can have more than uh, one function. I can have like two functions together and that will help me then solve uh, for the, the point where the, the two intersect. Let's say I have y equals minus x. Now I have those two functions. So this tells me that these two functions, they, their point of intersection will be this and that. So if I solve these two equations together, then I should have a solution that has X value that corresponds to that and that. So how do you do that? So you basically I equate the two, if I want to get where the two intersect, the two functions intersect. So I will do X plus four squared, equals minus x. So if I expand that, x squared plus um, 8x plus 16 equals minus x, then I'll have x squared now plus 9x. We move this to the other side to get plus x there. So plus 16 equals 0. So I don't think you can factorize this. So if you solve this using your calculator, quadratically, or if you use the quadratic formula, x equals plus or minus square root of b squared. Uh, okay, minus x minus b rather. x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. If you use that formula, then you should be able to get these values, okay? I hope that helps, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.